Greetings everyone, and Grade here for another H Powers 4 replay. Spot on the left side as the red Chinese or red English, we have Cracky there question mark. Spot on the right side as the blue Chinese, we have Vortex. Usually I will mention the longbow and see how matches will go up to longbow, spearmen, zin snooze, but in this case it is a water map. So there's gonna be a lot of differences in water. I don't know the unique upgrades when it comes to water. Water from most of the civilizations are not terribly different, so it all comes to that unique technology. The chi the uh, English has access to a plus one range upgrading castle. Mongols, of course, have piracy to give uh, a bit of a bounty for killing ships. Yeah, let's Long see what the Chinese day. is. <clears throat> Thunderclap bombs, warship fires, a nested bee attack, imperial age technology. So. Their advanced advantages at the Navy doesn't come till Imperial Age. But it does make his, uh, it says warships. Does that mean all warships? Okay, okay, you can see here it's classified as warship, the final ship. So while these are all technically warships, the only warship warship class is the final one, the Bao Chong. So that's given the bit of a uh, little bit extra firepower there. <clears throat> so the Chinese may have, I suppose, a plus one range over here. Combat ships, so plus one range for all of ships. That will probably be a bit more effective than the nested bees emplacement. I don't know how far the nested bees emplacement is. Both sides been heavy focus on the fishies. English has not collected any gold just yet, nor is the Chinese. Chinese like has spent some of their gold there as well. He may be going for... Of course, the Imperial official get some tax collection would be very useful. I wonder if he can supervise the uh, dockyard here to improve the fishing output. Though he's right now doing a good job of supervising the lumber mill there. And now we've got the Imperial Academy coming in out. We do got Abbey Kings in return. Abbey Kings is way back here. I've seen a recent replay where he pulled it near the water to get some good health regen as basically a good medic station to improve the healing aura of the docks. But we do have a Spring Gold ship being employed on now. Right now the English player is still in Dark Age, so doesn't have the any combat ships on the queue yet. And on the foot of wood, we have enough for going for a fire and Spring Gold ship. Spring Gold ship paints forward, finds a good volley down the fishing boat. May will pick himself off a free fishing uh, boat. Fire ship coming out this one here. Fire ships do not one shot ships. But he can always fall. He will force him away. He will give him some good. And we need to fall back and some healing. He's going for an arrow ship now. And decides not to pursue the demolition ship. So we've got this scout here. The scout could potentially draw the fire ship if he's not too careful. Arrow ship now to float on field. The English player, of course, does have the defense of the healing core of the dogs. Spring ship ships not engage each other. And. He has to keep this airship ready to pounce on that uh, incendiary ship, demolition ship. That's gonna fall down the fire ship. Here comes the fire ship as well. He does not have any airship to protect himself. And he's gonna use the fire ship to advance forward now. We'll get a good hit there. Destroys the spring gold ship. This spring gold ship is still alive. It's gonna take time to repair it up. And it's gonna throw some arrows or spring golds into the scout there. So overall, a good early lead by the English player. The Chinese player is eyeing for more units. He's also just lost his scout. So the red scout may lead him to victory. Although, honestly, it could provide well, good scouting information back at home. Now, i got two spring bolts ship here as... No, that's a fishing boat, not an arrow ship. This archer ship is trying to get repaired on us. And now I've got the dragon pearl here for... Groupman. So got an archer ship here as well. Now, I've got second spring bolt ships. He needs a focus fire there. The one of the Springgold ships getting repaired on up. And right now he's pursuing his ship there. Fire ship trying to push his way forward. Arrow ship rolls on hit there onto the air onto the uh Springle ship and that allows the Springle ship to be pursued by the fire ship this far. Springgold will go down. Now I can focus fire on this one here. The second time repair up the arrow ship with a fishing boat. And we do have it's inspired by the dragon turtle, but denies it. He's going to lose the ship anyway, so might as well deny the dragon turtle from his opponent. Airship has been saved. Airship just may want to fall back, get some passive healing. We do got a good number of 
He has a, an archer ship and spring golds here. It's some sort of hard to tell the difference between the two. There goes another fire ship. But just remember this: the airship has one, uh, what's it called? One mass versus two mass of these ships. Fire ship does go down to the arrow ship here, so got some good engagement here by the Chinese player. The fishing ships do get splashed by that fire ship. <laughs> Trying to get some more hits there onto the spring gold ship. There got another spring gold ship. Spring gold ships can heal up quite nicely. Arrow ship needs good damage. Airship only to burn his clothes down versus the uh, fire ships. Rolls a miss there on that fire ship. And blue's falling back. Large number of ships are damaged. So we need time to repair them up. As well, the human ore will help out. Right now, it's just navy for both sides. I'm very curious about how many villagers each player is putting on. Uh, the Chinese player just removed all his guys. Oh, okay, he's just building a lumber camp there. He has 21 versus 28, so the English player is really high, eyeing heavily into the navy, at least the wood. Small. And what food he's clearing collecting is probably from the fishing boats. Yep, now they're collecting, recollecting as well. Both of them have 10 villagers or 10 sources of food being collected on up. As well as they can always go for some land sources of food as well as the fishes. There's plenty of food on map fishes that enables nice path to get additional villager production cubes. Okay, there's an archer ship there. Got a pair of galleys here. Two fire ships for the English, one more fire ship for the Chinese. Trying to advance forward with the spring golds. Fire ships advance forward. He could perhaps use the fire ship to get the fire ships. They do 95 damage. The ships do have 145 health, so I won't one shot them. And one of the archer ships do go down there. Let's get some good balls here. Takes out the fire ship. Spring all ships do build the same versus the archer ships, but not versus any sort of heavier ship. Fire ships are advancing on forward. We may see a mass chain reaction. Fire ships pursuing over here. Massive hits over here. Good chunk of the English fleet does get damaged and sunken. Looks like the Chinese fleet is fine. Right now the military force is very similar still. Spring balls are firing away. A number of the Chinese ships are falling back. This one's quite damaged. Gonna get some heal up. And now it's on to fall back to up these ships individually. He's repairing up the spring gold or yeah, that spring gold ship there. More fire ships being blown on few. The number of the Chinese Navy is quite damaged. He's getting out some fire ships now. Soon to be five. Red is only get two. <clears throat> We've got three docks over here versus just two. No, there are three docks for the Chinese. It's sort of hard to tell the blue on blue. Fire ships do connect on fire ships. Charging forward. Let's look up that spring ball ship there. This one does go down as well. The spring ball ship can really focus down. The English player needs to pull out some fire ships. Fire ships are spawning as well. Got a fire ship here, turning idle, we're seeing fire from the spring ship. And so we're seeing that one, there's another archer ship here, very good. Does not take out the fire ship, and the English player has lost the seas. I think the Chinese player has secured the sea. Some fire ships here and there, he's just doing up a spring gold ship there. I think he just cancel, yeah, it does cancel it now. And the, the English player should just gather up what fish he can, and I for a second town center. We got the Bardic and Sunbeam plant field, trying to next to the boar as well as a good choke point there if you took a look at the map there's actually quite a bit of trees right here there's only a tiny bit of high ground and traversable high ground right here so either side can still go for land trade this map i think land trade is still a little bit better than uh sea trade of course chinese sea trade would be very very secure Uh, emergency fire ship being flown field, but it could potentially get some great damage there if it would have gone still down. And now the Chinese player should pull back with his uh, wooden ships, bring them up to healing, and the rest should be on patrol move along the coast. The English player needs eye for a second counter. He does have okay, 900 wood is not that's how much you need for a Mongol player, not for a everybody else player. You have an outpost being put out by the English player. Slipped on past these walls. 
And Red's not eyeing for hunting techniques. He's going to be eyeing for quickly cleaning up as much uh, huntables as quickly as possible. And look at this. The other English deer are actually on more or less on the right side of the map. So they spawn incredibly far away. The English player, there's also four next to him. So the English player should try and eye for those huntables. He could eye for a handful of uh, traders as well. But the traders are expensive. He has plenty of wood. He may want to cool off in the wood. He's cut up stone, so he should probably should take some of these lumber, uh, lumberjacks and use that to build his town center. You hear people shouting, it's just the, uh, king. The king lost the sea, but he has not... He can still draw his own sword. And don't sound some of his palisades walls there. A couple of mistakes there, but remember, those account is heavily in favor towards the Chinese now since, uh, the English player lost sea. And now we do have enough resources, almost enough resources for, uh, age, castle wage. Age player needs to go for King's Palace. He could go for the White Tower in order to help try to secure, a uh, land inlet. And this map is very laney as well. The White Tower wouldn't be half bad here. We got another second town, uh, town being pulled on a field. English player is approaching for a age up himself. And the King gets surrounded and will be shanked by all the villagers. And does get an arrow slip there, so going to try to torch it down. Of course, it will be effective, to say the least. We'll take out one of those villagers, very nice. I see he's climbing up the stone there. Got town center here. He has enough to age up, or needs a little bit more food now. If he has enough to age up, will he go for the King's Palace or the White Tower? There we go, goes for the White Tower. He needs a uh, quick defense emplacement. It won't love, and he can eventually use the Berkshire Castle. He can pull up with the Berkshire Castle right here to help hit the sea, find a little inlet so he can start hitting the fishing ships. He, the English player needs to be on defensive until Imperial Age. Then he can be a bit, then he can start uh, going offensive. The English player still picked up a stone. He could go for a keep, support the keep. Or to go for another town center. Going for another town center may be necessary. Chinese player pulled off on producing fishing ships. The economy is, there's a lot of fishing ships. He does not have drift nets yet. <clears throat> it's probably a good idea for drift nets. Primarily, not necessarily the gathering speed, but the increased carrying capacity will reduce, reduce the traverse time. On this map as well, you got a lot of fish next to you, but there's not really any in the center. While well, there's plenty up north up here as well, so it's actually a good idea to pull up docks up here. As well as put a priest. We are talking, now I got this villager. She is ready to stab that man. How crazy freaky would it be if you're running the woods and there's a crazy Chinese person coming at you with a knife? Yeah. He's going pretty far over. He may be eyeing for something cheeky over here, but I don't think he's going to get it since he's already been spotted. Red Scout is still in this area, so he's getting some good vision. And now we got the Lancers being pulled on the field. What do we have for defense? We've got a King, a couple of Knights on the build queue. There's only a handful of Lancers there. The, prim the primary town center does have additional arrow, but it's still going to be a lot of damage. King is not exactly. Eh, it's comparable to a uh, Lancer, but still a little bit inferior. Going back, trying to get inside the town center now. Remember, he just needs to keep it alive. He's bringing up the White Tower. Very, very good. The White Tower is exactly what he needs to get these guys killed off. And now he sees a lot of Lancer. He needs to go for some Spearman production. Crossbows wouldn't hurt either. The King does back him off, getting some good health regen or Those will help him keep a mobile defense force. It looks like Blue is not doing a patrol move, but just getting everything spread out along the sea. Very, very nice. But eventually, as the late game starts kicking on in, that's going to be consuming a lot of population. Right now, Blue has 35 population to consume, with only 11 uh, Lancers out in the field. So, two thirds of the army is locked away at sea. But granted, a third of his economy is locked away at sea as well. Pros and cons. We got some priests or monks to pull it out for the English. He may be eyeing for some relics. Got a relic down here, over here, and over here. It's only three. Okay, each player has a relic picked up, so I'm not sure where the other ones were. 
does get the Knights engage these Lancers. He does have a superior number of Lancers here, but doesn't want to get the Talents to the fire. They do have five Pierce on in a moment. But remember as well, it's generally a good idea to go for your Pierce damage. Expect to see, remember, uh, arrow ships are affected by Pierce damage. And I'm pretty sure the Pierce armor gets affected. Uh, no, they'll say the Pierce armor does not affect out C units. But I'm pretty sure Pierce damage does affect the Archer ships. We do have a outpost being pulled on now. Very nice. Oops, sorry about that. And drink in it, made a little pop. We're gonna outpost here just primarily for spawning. He does have Spring Gold that can help clear out the sea. Spring Golds do have more range than uh, Spring Gold ships. They have Titan Tower range versus uh, Spring Gold ships 6. Oh, and these builders are not gonna get overran. And we do have a crossbow now to pull on field. He's trying to get out of this region, but there's still these other villagers. He's going to lose some villagers to these lancers. That's going to set a tower there, mostly. Uh, not really all too well. He lost a lot of villagers there. He has have additional town centers. He has three towns on the field that can start producing a lot of villagers. The lancers push on forward. They need to fall back to the abbey. And he also really needs to engage that force there. He's getting a good number of crossbows, which is good. Spring Gold getting hit, but he does save it. Lance is pushing forward. We're seeing some crossbow fire there and military arrow fire. Crossbow is going to get over around a little bit out in the open to grab these Lancers. King's all advancing on forward. We got these crossbow moves. We need to fall back towards the Knights. And now got some good hits there. Lancers seem to fire there. So that's 65 villagers is big, but as the game goes on, the fish does, fishing ships do provide less and less of resources in return because of longer travel times. And now he's going for the Great Gatehouse. He's walking down the center of the map and so. You do not see Imperial Age yet for the English. He needs to go for the Berkshire Castle. He needs the defense. Having just a line of keeps here can be very hard to deal with, especially the Berkshire Castle. You also have to deal with uh, trebuchets and you have to get his own spring golds, but the spring golds will be useful to prevent shore bombardment as well. These lancers are a bit wounded. He does have a good force here. The spring gold just needs to be left over here. Two relics have been claimed by the English. There's still a third relic over here. King and lancer face four. Now got Imperial Age for the Chinese. Yeah, I think it's dark there. It's not gonna go too well. And all six sites have been captured by blue. That does put the pressure on the English player. Apparently, just simply does not have enough economy going. He does have one level of economic techs. Yeah, those villagers are not gonna last all too long. The Great Gatehouse poses a massive threat. I would say just send some battery rams to sort of camp the sacred site there, but the Great Gatehouse does siege damage rather than range damage, so battery rams don't last all too long near it. He's going to need to bring out some counterweight trebuchets against it, which does also give more preference towards the Weingard, Weingard Palace, which does give you a cheap banner army, so it does give you a relatively cheap trebuchets. Those just took inside the town center. I wonder if he has textiles. He appears to have for research. Knight's crossbow is trying to pursue that force there. Spring Gold's cleaning up the sea. Very good. Got an outpost here for spawning for the Spring Gold. Takes out ship there. Very, very good. Lancers. I think that's a elite Lancer research. Yes, we do. Four Lancers and the, the King here. He's Lancer. Oh, so wounded. He knows out numbered. He's not going to be all to lie. And now got these Lancers advancing forward. And yeah, that's crossbow. He's up. He has. Oh, pulls a um, relic out of the monastery. Unsuccessful. Well, the shot. But I don't think it's going all too well. And now we do have a bottle chug, which does have less range than a spring gold. He's trying to get out another conversion there. Unsuccessful. 
Red still has been losing too many villagers. And he has not been able to pull out any defensive stone walls to help hold back and secure the flanks or the front line. Because right now, he's just having trouble maintaining the even the front of his base. These crossbowmen's do receive a big charge attack there. Ancestry Leech uh, Lancers, they do a lot of damage. 45 damage to the charge attack. Crossbowmen's getting annihilated. King and the Knights are advancing forward. I don't think there's any way of being just to pull out the game right now. Pull out a win. We got a line of stone walls going up. Very, very good. Network Citadels will find some good fire support. As one line of policy balls are trying to look at the keep over here. Ingl the Chinese player also has a good amount of stone. Sees a keep. And he's gonna pull back his forces. Still does not have enough army to deal with all these lancers. His opponent has more lancers than he has forces on the field. Try to push out some of these farms. Goes off those lancers there. Another line of crossbows into those lancers. These lancers have been finally cleaned on up. Trebuchet is not firing away at the Great Gatehouse. We do now have a gate here, which will, will allow him to traverse this area as well as potentially mount units on the top of the wall. Mounting units on top of the wall is going to be, going to be very, very effective. So we've got some Lancers um, roaming around. We've got multiple trebuchets. Now we're seeing multiple... Spring gold fire. He needs defensive spring gold. He could use a spring gold placement to engage those spring golds. Though, let's get some hits there. Lance is still in the back line. Now, Red's going for his own line of defensive goals there. In fact, it's actually quite good. He's going to use that as a way to. Uh, mount his crossbow is a good defensive hard point. That's actually, as I mentioned before, a mounting on top of the wall is going to be very, very good. And this time, he's going to use this uh, choke point provided by his opponent with the gate to his advantage. King, however, may and his forces will get overwhelmed, but the crossbows are still alive, gain some good damage. Uh, there's no upgrades on the crossbows. He's going for a spring gun placement there. Red, who has too many villagers? He's trying to play defensively, trying to deal with the Sacred Side victory. At the current rate, he's slowly going to get it. But Red does have some tools to stop that with the Trebuchets. And soon the hard point on top. Yes, they have the Great Gate House. We've got multiple keeps here. He can send him battery rams to stall out the capture point. Got this. Okay, that one definitely goes down there. Got this Lancer still in this region. Trebuchet's fine race, trying to get out another stone wall gate there. Oh, he cancels it, but got it destroyed. Ooh. Now there's a breach there, which the English player can't exploit. There's two ways to get a. Uh, Units up here, a gate or a stone tower. He could actually go for a stone tower. Uh, he needs a gate and get. He needs to get the crossbows up there. The plus two range will be very important. Try and deal with the direct hit there onto the warship, the cannon ship. Still so wood being collected back there. So two minutes, thirty seconds remaining. So trying to do the gate, great gatehouse, he simply cannot advance as long as that in the region. He has a good number of trebuchets to put holes into it. He has a good number of crossbows here. I still believe he needs to get out gatehouse or stone tower. A stone tower is it's a pretty rare asset, honestly. And we do now have now the cannon now gains some good hits there onto the trebuchets. Trebuchet's fire, rolls missed there, crossbows hitting it. Needs a good hits there. 
he could try getting a spring ball to clear out this area and then try to go send a uh, transport ship up there. And we do now have the Nessa Bees in place there, so infantry cannot advance on the cannon on the cannon ship. Trying to get more stone walls there. Destroy that bit of gate there, which did not make this area traversable, and I believe the traversable area is very important right now. Great Gatehouse on fire. Lose that pop cap without both Trevor Chase hitting the Great Gatehouse. It does go down. He's trying to send his many crossbows over here. He needs batting rams now to uh, Yeah, I don't think there's any way he's gonna get back in the game or win this game. Receives a massive hit there. One volley away, and then it will be lit on fire. It's kind of lit on fire. Next volley will take it out. He needs the high ground. There you go. He did least some of his walls there. Now he's kind of traversing the high ground, but he's not traversing the high ground. One keep us both down. He can use this high ground here. He needs to get on top of this um, his wall segment there. And this will provide him an excellent fighting point and red backs of the game as well. <sighs> this is Anne Grade saying thank you for watching and on to the next replay.